I think we live in a bourgeois culture where m- people hate intellectuals. The truth is. So um, yes, of course, there are stupid people on the, on the internet who are really pretentious and think they're really smart. However, there are also really smart people on the internet who are very interesting and independent. And I think real intellectuals actually know this type of exploding galaxy brain moment. And it's one of the things that we live for as as thinkers, I think. And I think the fact that the galaxy brain meme was a thing and that it's generally a kind of resentful negative meme, it's usually used to make fun of someone else or to object to them or to, to belittle them, is really just a representation or an emblem of kind of bourgeois anti-intellectualism really uh, and a kind of resentful naysaying. So Aquinas wanted to say that – well, he did say famously in the in the Summa, his Summa Theologica. It, he said that if we say God is wise and then we say that Socrates is wise, we're not really saying the same thing. We're saying what is essentially a kind of analogy. That's That's the argument and that was kind of the dominant viewpoint. But then this guy, John Duns, comes around and he's like, hold up, homie. It ain't like that. Actually, when we use words to describe God and we use words to describe earthly things, those words actually mean the same exact thing. And that's okay. In fact, it's even a good thing. To this day, you know, scholars and theologians debate what are the implications of these different perspectives. And you have some people today like the, I think they call themselves the the radical orthodoxy, a group of theologians, mostly in Britain actually, who are kind of anti Duns Scotus. And they, they kind of say that Duns Scotus was the one of the big problems that led to the weakening of Christianity and the uh, development of secular culture. That by saying that we speak of God and we speak of earthly things in the same words that mean the same things, that this was a kind of belittling of God and a kind of arrogant elevation of of earthly things that ultimately allowed us as as a species to have done with the idea of God. That That's one of the arguments put forward by the radical Orthodox people. But then there are also interesting theologians today who make the opposite argument that, um, in fact, Duns Scotus was, was accurate and, in fact, it has salutary uh, implications even for Christianity. What's really at stake here, I think, is the attack on representational thought that is one of the core components of the, of the Deleuzean project. Deleuze – argued that any philosophy presents an image of thought and that this image of thought, it's not really explicit. It's never really demonstrated or proven. It's sort of a presupposition. Whenever a philosopher or any type of thinker or theologian or whatever presents a philosophy, there is in the background a certain image of what thought is and what thought should be and what thought can be. And that's never really fully spelled out. It's never really justified. It's essentially a kind of aesthetic. And there are different images of thought. This is something that Deleuze really wants to show to us, that we have, we have a choice, an essential, irreducible kind of freedom or aesthetic decision to make about, about what type of thought we want to engage in. A univocal ontology prohibits us from the false distinctions, and it forces us to rely on these qualitative differences, which I think Spinoza and Deleuze want to say are the real differences. And they are real in part because they are imminent. When I encounter someone and I feel joy and I, f- if I feel my powers increasing, right? Remember the galaxy brain meme? This is why I, I introduced that. You feel like a galaxy brain when you're talking with someone that you really get along well with you. You can just feel imminently, intuitively that this person is somehow kind of increasing your power. It's increasing your capacities. And that is associated with the emotion known as joy. That's all happening Imminently, automatically, it's happening from within what is already going on. You're not calculating. You're not strategizing. You're not creating a model. Um, It's it's an automatic kind of pre-conscious process, all right? And I think Deleuze wants to say that that is what's real. Those differences are real. We're all one substance, but those differences are real. 